Okay, one more thing to, to see is if um, if I wanted to use this program as a sub VI. A sub VI is basically um, well in the functions palette we have all of these things that do various things. You give them some inputs and they give you an output. But what if you have something that doesn't do what you want? You can write your own, which is what we've just done here. Right? We've written a little program that adds two numbers and it does something with two inputs and it has outputs. Right? It has two numerical inputs and a numerical output. It's also got these two Boolean inputs or controls and one Boolean output or indicator. So it has four inputs and two outputs. If this was something useful and we wanted to use it in the future, what we can do is go up to this connector pane, right click on it and choose a, a pattern that works for us. We have four inputs, so here's one with four inputs, but only one output. This one here though, how about that? These little boxes, they kind of correspond to the little terminals that show up on functions. We're basically making our own little function that we can use in the future in another VI. Once you put them on here, if you just click on each terminal, you, get, you see how we have the wiring tool now? What we're going to do is associate this black blackened highlight terminal with that control and that terminal with that control. You see how they've turned orange? Uh, because they're, well, they're, they're numbers, they're orange things. I'll click on this tab or uh, connector terminal and that control and here to there and those are green and this one to the output and this one to the other output and now I've done this so I've got uh, these two terminals are associated with these two controls this is associated with this uh, output orange is because they're floating point numbers the stuff down here is green because it's these two controls and this um, output so I'm going to save this program now save it, give it a name um, and save it into uh, you know a standard location where you keep all of your things all of your, your VIs I mean so I'm going to call it just um, um, it doesn't really have much meaning I'll just call it junk just it's the junk VI if I now go and create a new VI this new VI uh, it can use the old VI so I right click in this space and under the function palette if I go down to the very bottom and choose select a VI It takes me to my um, folder where I have all my VI stored. And look, I can put this junk VI on here. And you see it has these attachment points, a number, another number, and a bigger number. Switch one, switch two, and the LED. So I've got, uh, basically, um, this whole VI is now sort of encapsulated or shrunk into this little box. And I can use a VI in another higher level VI. And this is uh, the concept of subroutines in regular programming, um, where you have a program that calls another uh, smaller program to do one particular um, piece of repetitive uh, work or particularly complicated work. And then you use that as a, a sub VI. It's a very powerful programming technique. I won't bother saving this one. Uh, so we've written a program that doesn't do very much, and it doesn't do it um, all that interestingly. But this is sort of the basics of how to start editing and getting things done uh, inside LabVIEW. Uh, any other functions or things I need to show you for basics? Well, I guess one of them that I didn't show you um, is if you're looking for a function, because there, there's so, so many functions built into LabVIEW. It's like Excel. Excel has thousands and thousands of functions. So does LabVIEW. And sometimes you're not sure, where is it? It's going to be in one of these palettes somewhere. For instance, if you wanted, um, if I wanted, instead of this to be adding, if what I wanted was this to be a number to the power of another number, for instance, if I put um, 5 here 
and two here. Oh, sorry, it doesn't let me... Oh yeah, I made it so that the increment was locked in. Okay, let's put six here and two here. And what if I want to do is take six to the power of two and give me that. Well, I need uh, I need an exponential function. Maybe I don't know where that is. I, I need uh, something to the power of another number. If you look, that's a numeric mathematical kind of thing, but it's it's not in here. I happen to know where it is, but if you don't, what you can do is uh, use this search button. And the problem you have now is you have to kind of know how to describe what you're after. So um, exponent, maybe? Put the word exponent up here and see what that tells you. And it gives you a list of all sorts of stuff down here that might be what you're after. Exponential functions, exponential fits, sometimes quite a lot of complicated things. The exponential function, that's not it. Um, number to exponential string, no. How about power? Power, power, of, oh, power of x. How about that? So you could click on this and actually drag it. If you if you think it might be right, drag it right into your um, diagram and see if that's what you want. Or you can double click on it and it'll take you to the palette where it actually is. It's under mathematics elementary exponential function so it's a long way in but there it is power of x get context sensitive help yeah that's what we wanted so you can close this help windows and get my edit tool and put this where it belongs a number to the power of another number it's x goes in here and this goes in there when we wire this up and run it we're going to send our 6 and our 2, and we get 6 to the power of 2, 36. We run this continually. Well, 6 to the power of 2. How about 8 to the power of 2, 10 to the power of 2? That's right. We could change this to, oh, 4. 10 to the power of 4 is apparently 10,000. Okay, so uh, the point is this uh, search function can be really useful, but you have to have some way of expressing or kind of explaining to LabVIEW what kind of function are you looking for. You'll find there's, there's an awful lot of them. Uh, I think that's pretty much it for basics. It's been kind of a long video. Uh, I hope this uh, gets you up and running uh, and in going in LabVIEW.